I also want to acknowledge the contribution of our Vice President Sapna, who unfortunately couldn't be present today due to some prior uh, unexpected uh, developments, uh, professional developments. And uh, she is coordinating this effort and the entire CUA social as well as this vertical. And I'm sure under her guidance, we will be able to achieve our purpose. And the backbone of the entire uh, uh, initiative, the entire team of COA social, including Harpreet and Raistar and Oberoiji and everyone, and Sandeep and the graphics team and everyone in the committee, the COA social committee. Thank you very much for uh, coming forward, working selflessly, tirelessly behind the scenes to make this a success. And the success of this is seen in the number of views and the comments that we keep receiving continuously after the programs and sometimes even before the programs, now people have started suggesting that, you know, we should have these uh, kind of topics or we should have uh, you know, such and such matter for discussion, which we think is more important. And that, uh, that shows that, you know, people are receiving very well. So uh, over to you, Geeta, and thank you once again. I bring warm greetings once again from the Council of Architecture. And like I always say, the council is you and you are the council. So uh, together we can make a difference. Uh, and uh, I, I, I hope that we'll have a very meaningful uh, discussion today, which will not only enlighten our uh, budding architects and would-be architects, but also uh, inform the people uh, at large as to what architecture is all about. Thank you, Geeta, and over to you. Thank you. We'll do our best, Habibji. Thank you. Uh the president of the Council of Architecture, Council of Architecture, the team that's putting this together uh, for having this new vertical COA social people. Um, Zaha Hadid is known to have said, if you want an easy life, do not be an architect. Uh, I remember both my brothers who were studying to be engineers, marveling at the hard work that I engaged in while studying architecture. This is of course way you know, uh, past in time. Even after becoming an architect, life continues to be a challenge. Whether it's the process of designing or finding creative solutions in the nature of one's work, which are exciting challenges, uh, whether it is a conventional practice, teaching or outside the box creative careers that architects can be, architecture can be a fountainhead of. And each of these, whichever option you choose, needs oodles of hard work coupled with a generous amount of patience uh, particularly in the field of architecture, patience is uh, a virtue that cannot be underscored, since the rewards may not be visible right at the outset. This new vertical, like the president has just said, has been launched with the objective of reaching out to that segment of population uh, architects are meant to serve, largely those who experience what is created by us. While the intent of this current session is an orientation to the larger audience and the magic of our world, but we'll also try and give a peek to those aspiring architects on what they can expect as they embark on this journey. This is to help them make an informed decision of pursuing architecture as a possible career. A warm welcome to our panelists, architect Nandini Somaya uh, Sampat, principal architect at Somaya and Kalapa Consultants. Welcome Nandini. Uh, architect and professor Tapan Chakravarti, consulting professor at Pearl Academy, Delhi and adjunct professor at UPES Dehradun. Welcome, Tapan. And our youngest panelist here, Manogna Malampati. She's the national president of NASA India, a National Association for Students of Architecture for the term 21-22. Welcome, Manogna. Thank you. Uh, you were recently elected, uh, I think last month as the president, and I'm really happy to see a woman get elected. And this is the second time I have seen a woman at the helm in the last decade. I think it was Samriddhi earlier. Um, maybe you can spend a minute telling everybody what NASA is about and also how it feels to be the president, the second woman president. I don't think there have been too many women presidents have there. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, NASA is briefly the National Association of Students of Architecture. So it's been started as a moment, moment 63 years ago, and it's running all by students uh, and for the students. So NASA is something that is imbibed as a culture in everyone's college. Everyone takes it as an emotion to be a part of NASA, its programs, its conventions, and the trophies that we host in. 
so it's a culture that's passed on to every batch uh, in a college uh, for me to be the president i don't see it very different to be the women president i must say uh, i think nasa has always given opportunities equally to everyone to come up uh, and take up chances so for me i see it more as an opportunity to develop myself as a leader and do something on for a greater betterment of the fraternity and for the association that's all glad to hear that manopna tell us uh, did architecture choose you or did you choose architecture how did that happen <laughs> uh i should say it's both the ways uh growing up i had a fair idea about that architecture wasn't like any other usual profession i was also fortunate enough to be around and interact with people studying in different design courses uh, while i was attending an art class when i was in 9th and 10th grade so i must say i had a fair understanding about biarc being an undergraduate program uh, also talking to a lot of people uh, i was fascinated about how architecture is a creative expression and how architecture can bring about a change in society starting and and people's lives starting from the doorstep to the society so i think uh, this made me pursue architecture as a personal choice that i made uh, i must also say architecture happened to me at the right place at the right time and at the right age to take it up as a career and rather a life now nice not not everybody is uh, lucky that way i'm sure many who are listening in are still trying to figure out whether they are cut out to be architects nandini i am sure you did not know this but i was told yes a couple of days ago by apurva that your mother brinda somaya was at a session on co coa social on this very day last year <laughs> so it's quite a sweet coincidence that you are with us today um, yours was a very different trajectory a long journey to architecture and for sure to me it seems as if architecture chose you uh you have a successful architect for a mother and yet you chose law initially how did architecture draw you into its fold firstly thank you so much geeta for having me here uh, heartiest congratulations on coas social habib khan ji's introduction of this and contribution to the community is so important so we're very excited as practitioners to be able to contribute to this today um and wonderful to hear manogna as well and everything she had to share Uh, my journey yes uh, certainly as they say i didn't touch my nose like this i put my hand all the way around um uh, i think i grew up with a sense of wanting to implement some kind of justice in community and i think for me uh, i also grew up around uh, people who are from different professions my grandmother was a zoologist my grandfather an engineer my father is a cardiac surgeon and my mother is an architect so when you're growing up and my other grandparents were in the army and a teacher so i think the joy of being able to see different professions and watching each person being extremely passionate about what they do was really the base and foundation of understanding what i wanted to do but i think there was this innate idea of wanting to i think implement justice for people and community within the country and i think the direct link with that to me at the time seemed law um i enjoyed speaking uh, i enjoyed research but i think the big chunk that i kind of ignored for a very long time was creativity i've always loved art um ever since i was a little child uh, my mother and i used to go to all the galleries in mumbai on saturday and we used to see all the art new artists who used to come up and it used to conclude with pani puri at kailash parbat so that was really you know this uh, kind of ingraining of art and love for culture that was always there and when i found my way going into law um it's certainly uh, as my grandfather says every piece of education is so valuable so it taught me how to think uh, certainly architecture is also a business at the end of the day and uh, you know to have those set of skills to be able to be confident to understand documents and deal with clients from the legal sense is extremely helpful but i think um after i began practicing as a lawyer i 
desperately missed creativity so much that it was draining me and i found that the mornings were getting heavy to wake up and when that happens uh, you know you start questioning where you are and um, i was uh, not that young anymore i had to make that big transition and i did i managed to do that i retrained and uh, you know uh, began practicing and now it's been 15 years and time has flown and there's not one morning where i don't get up with full verve and uh, you know the passion for the subject so i think you know it's often cliche where people say you know you have to absolutely love what you do but it's so true that innate love that you wake up every morning and you're interested and you're curious of course there's hard work and that goes for every profession but that that passion that you get up with and you're dying to get into the next part of the day that's what it's about thank you so uh, yours was kind of a search as you went along uh, trying to figure out how you can uh, uh, you know meet your goal of justice for communities and um, yours is also a typical example portraying that it's obviously never too late to make that career choice and a shift um we are going to be talk not everybody has the luxury or the um uh, you know luck of having parents who understand and allow that kind of uh, uh those kind of changes and uh, uh, pivoting but we'll talk about that a little later before that tapan you're the oldest hate to give that out uh and from your vast experience consequently probably the wisest as well you've taught architecture and uh, are now involved with pedagogy in the space of interior design um you probably see students who want to become architects joining interior design and vice versa what should go into making that right career choice how does one know whether architecture in the field is for him or for her well of course at the at the time when uh... we are still uh, you know just finished struggling with our school it's not so easy actually it's not so easy to make a choice right there and then but then uh, we do we do have a system by which we need to jump into that into that sea so i think there is no better way like uh, if for everything we need to do a little bit of a research for ourselves we don't have to do research like an academician does or a scientist does but uh, we need to do a little bit of a fact finding we need to do a little bit of a research i remember when i when i moved from class 10 to class 11 from then onwards in those days we didn't have you know this access to telephones easily uh, no other communication we didn't have uh, emails we had ne never seen a computer but we had the indian postal system so i remember in those days we used to have these uh, uh reply paid postcards so it was a joint two postcards one in which you write and you 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 send it to the person the receiver's address and the other one was uh, attached to it which can be torn and separated to attached in which you put your own address and uh, i used to write these postcards to almost all my relatives who were older to me they were having some different uh, you know occupations various i wrote to uh, various colleges to their registrars and i must tell you that uh, perhaps at that time when uh, i think the load was less on registrars etc they replied they used to reply so all that i did was that my entire two years or even if not entire two years let us say somewhere around the middle of class 11 till about middle of class 12 after which you start getting ready for your exams i used to write these letters and i used to get a lot of information mm -hmm. and uh, my own you know in my own environment in my mohalla or colony etc my elders seniors even immediate seniors who were probably were, you know were, i mean were in college in fact in one of this kind of a chance meeting that i came to know that you know there was a profession called architecture to be honest we did not know that architecture existed for our architecture was something to do you know people write books on the temple architecture of india so it's about a constructed building that it was a profession was actually not known to us in our way back in 70s 1970s so it was a chance meeting with somebody which actually introduced me to that okay here is another and because i used to you know dabble a little bit with some kind of a sketching and drawing and i had a i think in, inherent 
and uh, maybe even uh, genetic love for geometry. My father used to love geometry. And so when I was a little kid, he used to, you know, explain to me circle as seven up there types, you know, and those kinds of things. So I remember I, I developed an inherent love for geometry. And even in the school, it was geometry and trigonometry, which I aced all the time. So when this architecture got introduced to me, it was, it was something which sort of fascinated. So I think that it's that what is important. Do you, are you fascinated by something? Would you love to indulge into something? And I think that that be, can become your career. And if you can at least try and make that into a career, I think that's what I, is, is more important. Unlike a lot of students that I find today who come up, who, who choose a career with their, with their head, but they don't choose a career with their heart. And I think that's where we go wrong. And, uh, and that head thing is sort of pumped in by a lot of people around, you know, your relatives, your parents, your peer group. Even, I mean, today, the number of people who are blindly going into software engineering, I don't know if it's engineering or not, but okay, software working, right? It's not that all of them are really interested. They're going there because some strange interest for, you know, a lot of paisa I was saying. Now you can't have a career like that. If you want to have a career like that, go into business, trade. You can trade anything, it doesn't matter. But basically what you're looking for is money. So you go into a trade. And why go into a profession? So I think that that's something which we, a profession will always need that passion. Otherwise you are not going to do well. You may get your first paycheck, which is gone, going to be thick, right? Or a big paycheck, but you will not end up with a bigger paycheck, paycheck later on in life. There you need that basic love, uh, which will sort of, so I think that is something which uh, should be, that's the way I understand it. And I do find there are people who actually come and uh, they actually come and uh, have that passion. In fact, in many of the PG courses, I'm not saying master's courses, but post-grad courses, people who have graduated in some other subject, even commerce, and now they are coming into interior design and I'm asking them what happened? So he says, I did that commerce thing because I had to, you know, uh, sort of handle my parents. But now that I've done it, uh, now I am asking them, can I please do what I wanted to do? And here I am. So I'm finding a huge number of students and I feel bad for them. But uh, I'm at least happy that somewhere they are able to take a U-turn. So I think they, I wish they could do it right there after class. Right then, yes. yes. And there's no harm. Change, yeah. One more thing. Well, I, I, I wish people could take one year off if they find that it is difficult uh, immediately after class 12. Why don't they just take one year a off? Gap year, a gap year. Right? Backpack karo, yeah? go, go and see the world and think. And uh, maybe by the end of it, you will make a choice, a good choice. So the parents end. watching this and they'll probably have their eyebrows up as you're mm -hmm. speaking. You invested a lot on, uh, 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 you know, from that postcard incident that you narrated, you invested a lot in trying to understand what you wanted to do in life. And that's interesting. Uh, things have changed today, though. Uh, uh, I find I was speaking to somebody, they're trying to give out some scholarships. So I was doing an interview. And um, I was asking a lot, you know, the boy, boys and the girls that I was interviewing on how they decided. And they seem to know about architecture from class seven, eight. So that was quite uh, uh, heartening for me that these were conscious choices in at least some of the cases. Um, yeah, Manogna, you're in your fourth year. Uh, what is architecture okay. school like today? I know that things are different because of the pandemic and your first year was before the pandemic. Again, I've been speaking to youngsters who have not seen college yet and have spent the last one and a half years, uh, uh, you know, studying at college, but virtually. So at college, what was your first year like? What challenges did you grapple with? How did you find your way around this new life and new love? Absolutely, like everything's different right now. All of us would know the pandemic's brought about a drastic change in the teaching and learning process. And in a course like architecture, it's strikingly seen. Like it's hardly one way learning when it comes to architecture. Interaction both with the peers and with the faculty is very essential. But I would say nonetheless, everyone's striding on. We're trying to 
uh, do a lot more. All the institutes are trying to for the betterment of this online education scenario. Uh, and then like this first year, first year at college, what was it like when you were uh, physically? Right, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll get to I'll get to that. Yeah, sure, sure, I'll, sure. I'll, 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 yeah. As of now, uh, we just start our design process right from our home, finish it, submit everything. We wouldn't have thought that a student would complete that thesis without printing a piece of paper, but we are doing it now. So I would say it's progressing in one way, but uh, there are downsides to it about not interacting with friends and batchmates as once we did in studio. Uh, coming back to my first year, it definitely was one of the most uh, adventurous or it was a fun ride for me in the first year, like exploring all the different types of design principles uh, before we dived into the core architecture and start making drawings. It was a lot different than what I thought it would be like before joining architecture. Uh, but the best part was every day came as a surprise. Like we wouldn't know what we would do in the studio that day. Like. Uh, we would come explore different things and go back home with that clothes messed up from all the hands-on workshops that we have, from all the model making. But then I definitely do miss the physical studios from back then, wish we could go back. So how different, uh, you, you were part of a larger engineering campus, right? Right. Um, there, are, there are students who are uh, aspiring to be architects who are watching this uh, or maybe watching right. it later. So how do you stand apart as uh, students of architecture today compared to the rest of the streams, engineering streams or uh, the other streams that are there. We, we are considered a breed of our uh, you know, different sort. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's a common notion that is everyone that only architects get architects and no one else gets to know what an architecture student or an architect is thinking about. For example, like even in my college, people would consider, okay, architecture block is some other block who doesn't interact with all of this. So there's always that difference. I think as a fraternity, we should kind of try to reach out to more people like what we're doing. Right now with COA Social or what NASA intends to kind of do, reach out to more public. I think that's when uh, a common man would understand that architecture is a daily necessity for everyone to live in and not only a rich man's thing to go to an architect and get things done. So it's kind of developing, it's an improving situation, but yeah, there's a lot more. Thank you. Nandini, how does how do you think these youngsters should equip themselves uh, now that they're stepping into architecture? What should they come prepared with? I've known people who say don't prepare and just come and get molded, but uh, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes colleges don't necessarily have everything that's required to nurture. So what would you say? You know, they say architecture is the master of the arts and it's really about exploring that with as a student having that flexibility and you know the opportunity to be innovative at that time i think college definitely is structured in so many ways so there are a lot of ways you can kind of diversify within in those five years, you know, to try so many other things. So whether it is, you know, one thing that Professor Chakravarti said, travel, such an important part, knowing your country, traveling the country, uh, and small things, understanding culture, architecture, the way people live, textiles, that's the beauty. It kind of encompasses everything. And it's amazing how when you go to a place as an architect, you literally absorb every aspect and you come back to your practice and you, it's amazing what you take away from from it and how it affects your creativity in so many ways. So I think travel definitely is important. Any practical um, experience, uh, Ms. Sumai and I call them the god of small projects. It doesn't matter how small the project is. It could be helping restore a small water fountain or maybe, you know, just helping a neighbor, you know, building up something again. I think to be able to think creatively and work with your hands. I often think of architecture like a big puzzle. We have uh, kind of the tools that we do, but the real excitement is in coming up and putting all the pieces together. And when you do it, you know, it's aha moment. So every project is a piece of puzzle and that excitement to solve each puzzle is what should be the excitement with everything that the student can do. And I think the last thing I would say is 
this idea of the nobility of the profession. I think that's very important that we have to keep reminding people and each other. We are one of the professions like law, like medicine, um, like, um, you know, a uh, uh, noted profession where we extend ourselves to the community. And I come back to this idea of justice that through architecture, there is so much we can do. We can do it to help communities. We do it, um, uh, you know, even for larger or better scale projects. Um, in India, we're blessed with this diversity of being able to work across different scales. So you can work on a very high end international scale project and you can still work in a rural developing community. Mm -hmm. That is the strength that an architect should have in India and that we should be proud to have. So I think, uh, you know, there should be pride in the profession and we should be proud to say we're architects and people who join it, you know, parents should be, you know, excited and encouraging children to do this because they become such an important part of the community. I think it's important to have some sessions like this for parents as well, for them to understand uh, how they need to let go and, you know, not... I remember my father wondering what on earth I was doing, sitting up all night, having all these, uh, you know, teamwork and endless cups of uh, coffee and... Uh, uh, and then, and then that Eureka moment happens so much later. You're sitting and you know they think we're gassing around, and then suddenly it happens, and you're putting it, putting pen to paper, and uh, uh, the magic happens. Tapan, would you like to add to that on um, uh, what what youngsters need to come prepared with? Uh, before really, before, before really. you get there, before you get there, I'd also like to uh, ask you about your son. He has, uh, 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 you know, architects for parents, both you and Anubha are architects, but he's chosen something uh, a little different. Um, again, what kind of research did he get into doing before he made his choice? Uh, and I, I'm told that he has a, a keen eye for architecture and art as well, obviously so. Yes, yeah, sure. So coming to my son, I mean, like, uh, he eventually graduated in philosophy. And I think that I don't know how it happened because uh, it was uh, again, again, I mean, most of uh, many of these choices, many of the things that we do, we may deny on the face of it, but you are destined. So I, I am a firm believer of destiny and uh, it has happened in my career, including joining architecture. So he was interested in history. And uh, there is a good possibility that because both uh, my wife and I, dabble in history quite a bit and especially me I've been teaching history of architecture and history of settlements now what almost 20 years so I think in in the in the house this history uh, somewhere in the in some form or the other kept creeping up we were talk we talk about mythologies we talk about you know Mahabharata we discuss these kinds of things openly we read these kinds of books we talk about you know the independence movement in India many things it's not only uh, architectural history that you know which temple came first uh, so I think that uh, there was a kind of an atmosphere so he was basically interested in history uh, so, and, but his entire education trajectory was anyway, a little different in the sense that he was first in Merambika, which is a free progress school, uh, under the, uh, you know, uh, Aurobindo Ashram, uh, 11th and 12th, he did CBSE and I think he did pretty well. And then he went and joined Ashoka university where being a liberal arts thing, uh, you could choose your major and minor later. So he was interested in the beginning that eventually he will choose history as a major. But I think that at the point of time when he had to make the choice, the faculty and the way the topics, there it is not subject wise, it's topic wise. The topics in philosophy seem to be more interesting than the topics available in history at that point of time. And I think so as a result, when uh, he therefore sort of said, he came back and said, you know, I mean, I won't take up uh, philosophy. I said, you go ahead, you know better. You be, you've been in the system. You've already done your first year. What subject is going to interest you? You know better. I mean, how do I know? I only know about architecture. So, so he went and chose uh, philosophy. He got his major in philosophy, he got a minor in history. And uh, I think that that was interesting because we came to learn a lot more about uh, you know, uh, pure history, more cleaner, not architectural only from him and a bit of philosophy. It's too heavy for me. I don't understand that. But I think that he also was very argumentative right from the day one. 
and uh, so it probably helps so he 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 chose probably whatever he feels and he's very proud to be and i tell him that look you are a philosopher and he says no no not that because we as architects say we are architects so i think that anybody who's done philosophy should be known as philosopher and uh, well why not so i think that's the kind of a thing i think we are both fine with it my wife and i because nice. like you rightly yeah. said that perhaps because we are architects and i must tell you something very small little interesting thing mirambika which is a completely free progress school for children and uh, wait, initially the maximum number of parents were architects because i think that as an architect parent we understand that risk is not a problem that failure is not an issue and what is exactly failure is it not being able to answer a particular question on a particular day in a particular exam or a test or it is a failure of your so i think that maximum i mean ashok lal and mark warner and all those a lot of architects were actually parents of mirambika students and uh, maybe a few artists maybe a few journalists just all those people there were hardly any uh, run i mean you know the straight jacketed uh, professionals uh, or professions that kind of parents were very few i was surprised that one of the parents in our group of children was actually a chartered accountant and i said hats off man i mean uh, you know that you are able to send your kid and both their kids to mirambika so there were people but uh, there were few so i think that also helps so happen since you read it there is a question from uh, agnel <laughs> what is the difference between b arc b plan and interior design can't be anybody better than you to answer well first of all i think that b plan is different from both architecture b arch uh, and uh, let us say bachelor in interior design or interior architecture in the sense that architecture and interior in my opinion is more design uh, biased and uh, b plan like the term said is more planning biased planning is more to do with policy so it is not a uh, more it's it's a it's more to do with regulations what should be done in terms of getting the numbers right it's basically statistic based uh it has to do with how much of water how much of human beings what is the demography how much of electricity is available what kind of sewage what is the soil condition so you create a plan so even when you create a master plan of a city it is not a map it's not a blueprinted map it's a book so a planner creates the entire planning policy of wherever whatever settlement it could be an urban settlement it could be a region i mean a, a rural settlement it could be anything in architecture you do do some planning like if i have to come out with a house before i can design the house i also have to plan the spaces does my drawing room come next to the dining room yes or no is the dining room going to be related with the kitchen yes or no that's planning but then after that it's a question of how does the human being interact with the bedroom or the dining room or the dining room does he see the window right does he see the door correct is the floor too slippery for my grandmother right can the child just jump across the bed or not or is the bed too high for the child? so how how does one interact that's where design comes in and in architecture you primarily try to design the spaces and there are a lot of people who say you design the building you actually don't design the building the walls are actually trying to separate two spaces including outdoors and indoors so the wall is incidental the idea is which is indoor and which is outdoor the wall between the drawing room and the or the dining room and the kitchen is incidental it's basically that do i need to connect them two spaces as one spaces or do i want to cut and create two separate spaces so we actually work with spaces and we also talk about the exterior on the other hand in an interior architecture or in interior design we try and make an interior space much more user friendly now it could be looks it could be works it could be if i am say physically uh, disabled i am an old person what kind of my what kind of walls do i need can i have a handle to grab because i might fall or in whatever i do so what you do to an interior space to make it much more friendly in actual usage mood feel 
feel good, right? All that. That's where interior comes in. So it is a bit more specialized than architecture. Architecture is the overall. Interior becomes even more specialized. If you want to do in architectural product design, it will become even more specialized. You're going to design how a door knob works. So I think these are the various ways. And uh, the, I mean, in a nutshell, actually, otherwise we will take probably the whole day to sort of discuss. Yes. So yeah. So I don't know if that answers to an extent or not, but this is the way I I am. hope it does, Agnal. I hope you got your answer. Nandini, we spoke about uh, a, a few, few um, uh, streams like an architect doing interior design. We talked about Tapan and uh, Anubha uh, being historians. Um, what are the different roles an architect can play? Because typically the common uh, person thinks it's just designing of buildings or maybe they don't even know this designing they probably think they build buildings and that's it so can you tell us a little bit more on besides the kind of practice you do what else can an architect I, I think listening to professor chakravarti it's very you know he was really explaining you know the diversity that is architecture i think you're so right Gita. there's this real preconception that you know, it is just so technical and so streamlined and so gray, but it's incredibly rich as a subject. And, you know, that's what's exciting. That's what we love about it. One aspect, of course, as, he, as was explained, you know, there's uh, within architecture, you have conservation where we look after older buildings, adaptive reuse. Uh, we have greenfield projects, which are new projects that we build. Um, we get into architectural interiors for all the projects. So how that goes into the micro planning further, we get into landscape design, we get into building services. So, you know, there's this, this constant evolution of the process and the typology of work that we do. And then within that, you have such an array of buildings. It's like a box of chocolates. You have religious public buildings, you have residential, you have hospitality, you have IT centers, you have tall buildings, you have rural settlements. I mean, it's, it's, you know, this wonderful array of typology of works where each type demands um, learning, knowledge, expertise that we're able to gain as architects. So, um, you know, it is, it is splendid because it is so vast in its technical capability and yet it is so rich in its diversity as a profession that you're really able to couple all those when you're practicing. And I think the underlying essence of all this is coming back to, um, I think it, what was discussed earlier is for me as well is research. Um, you know, I also had a liberal arts education. I was a, a government major and a physics minor. So during liberal arts, we did archery, we did rowing, we did mime, we did math, we did art history. And that philosophy and it's that like is the dream. Joy. It's, it's the dream. And the beauty of architecture is it encompasses all those ideas because each project comes back to being unique. There is no standard solution like in many other professions. You have to look at it. I often look at it as a patient. An older building is like a patient who has an ailment. And they come to us as the doctor. And we, we look at the problems and we suggest very sympathetically the solution. Or you have a fresh project, which is, you know, just you being very innovative and thinking out of the box. Or you have a rural or a sensitive community project where then you have to research about how those people are, how they live, how they work, um, what do they want, what are their aspirations and dreams. So I think we are very blessed to be working in a profession with that diversity, but every day is learning. And I think if it's one thing we, we realize as we practice, even Ms. Samaya at her time is saying, I'm learning. And that's an amazing thing to do in our practice practice is that you're always learning always something. Learning. Yes. So uh, Manogna, a lot of food for thought for you. You're hearing uh, right. you know, older people kind of talking about uh, how probably to chart your path. Have you started thinking about what you want to do in life and how are you making these decisions? Or trying to make these decisions? I, I, I really think I'll need a break after my bachelor's is done. I'll take a break as someone so told. I'll go around and I'll probably think about it that um, uh, I was in a state that, uh, okay, let me go, go ahead, do master's, but I'm really trying to contemplate if I really should do master's or start practicing. I think I'll need a break. 
You you made certainly made Tapan and Nandini very happy with that uh, comment. <laughs> uh, also talking about uh, uh, gratification, Tapan was talking about gratification coming in much later uh, in life for uh, architects in terms of uh, even the money, uh, the salaries being very low. I have uh, a question from Ratesh and Agnil. Of course, it's a very direct question. Uh, maybe you should answer it in our own way or uh, change the question, what is the salary? Can we get a job immediately after graduating or do we have to wait? Uh, someone want to take that up? Manumna, to begin with, maybe you can you can talk about, you don't have to say what the salary is, but uh, how, how you look at this aspect of, uh, you know, architects are not paid as well as uh, any other profession as you graduate. So how do you deal with something like that when you get out and what do you wait uh, for? I think firstly my advice would be architecture is a profession that you love to do it forever only if you're not looking at making money instantaneously. Uh, so I think we should put that thought aside and you know start enjoying what we're doing. Money will come later on. I think that's something we should keep it aside, but it is an aspect for a lot of people who are planning to study. Obviously, monetary support is something a lot of people look at before pursuing a course. So uh, I would say it, it's not a very highly paid profession at the start, but if you strive towards it at a later stage, I believe uh, everyone could achieve what they would want to do. So uh, Nandini, you spoke of it being a business. So I'd like you yeah. to come in there and give us some hope. <laughs> so Geeta, I think like every prof profession, of course, there are challenges as well. Um, the reality is, I think, unfortunately, because the industry has to uplift itself, I think there's a certain level of upliftment that has to happen so that we are respected as a profession more. I think it is improving. But unfortunately, because of the value of our services are often so devalued, uh, so often is the payment scale. And I think, um, you know, the president talked about this, how there is this need as a community to uplift each other. And this is talking about ethics, integrity, all the things that are down in the COA that need to be followed as a community. And I think that if we do that, that monetary increase will happen. I think over time, there is already, you see a huge transition of value of Indian architects. We are able to give a very high quality of work. This is certainly valued by customers all over the country and there is that slight transition but as an entry level student is it is extremely hard world financially yes you do start at you know a tough starting point but if there is commitment and passion and you know you're able to uh, work through the process i think there is satisfaction great satisfaction in the profession and you know i think every profession needs that touch of luck and I think, you know, it's, it's, it's like a marriage. If everything, all the stars align, you know, good things will happen. And um, I think it's very important that people, uh, young students or people who are starting off, at least even I learned that at the very beginning, you know, do small projects, just do work. Don't worry about the monetary income you have to earn. We all have to earn to survive. These past COVID two years have been very difficult financially for everybody. A lot of uh, practices have gone, you know, just uh, been washed away. So it's not been easy, but I think studios work as a family. We all support each other and that's the greatest strength. Um, but you must, we must be open to doing all typologies of project, no matter scale or size, because you never know when the next project will come from. So it might be somebody might see a small work you've done or appreciate something that you've done. You might meet someone through that. And that's what architecture is also. It's relationships, connections, and that will allow for growth um, of a business if you decide to start on your own. And within a firm as well, I think just being passionate and committed, um, you know, people are able to grow uh, definitely within the firm, but it's tough. And I think that is the state of many professions today. So uh, we all have to kind of keep at it together. That, that's the reason I talked about, you know, dollops of patience that's required in our Absolutely, absolutely. 
Tapan, you've been a pedagogue all your life, pretty much. I've heard about the magic you weave with your students. I have a young girl working with me who raves about the classes you took. What is the role a teacher can play in making learning a happy experience? While you're uh, uh, giving us a line on that, since the session is more for students and aspiring students of architecture, I'd like you to also reflect more on how students can get the best out of their teachers and their college. Sure, I'll, I can, but uh, do I have a little bit of a time uh, yeah, to, yeah, go ahead. Uh, to talk about the previous point before I reach this one? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So something that I've been, I mean, talking to my students, a lot of them, because they ask a very similar question time and again, time and again. Why does a banana doesn't cost the same as a mango? Why does a Daseri and an Alfonso cost differently? What do we do then? We can only have Alfonsos and we can dump the bananas. So I, I think that we have a problem out there that what exactly is well paid? I mean, I don't think I have ever had a problem with my payment. I've always got reasonably good pay. So I think that, first of all, we need to understand that my value, and I started understanding it later on when I was given earlier, I used to get salary and they said, no, basic pay, this and that. And one day, finally, in a private institute, I, they, they said CTC. Now, first, I didn't understand that, but then I went back and tried to work it out. What the hell is CTC? So that's the point it comes. What is my cost to the company? What do I bring to the company? If I bring good or let's say much, they will pay me much. If I, if I bring little, they're going to pay me little. So I think even what Nandini was talking about, does the society, when I'm practicing, does the society understand what is my CPC? Do they really, can I tell somebody that, because you gave me this commission to get your design of your house, I have brought on the table. If you hadn't, you wouldn't have. They don't understand that. A lot of clients have come back and say, you have elevation. You know, like some rang birang. We, we are actually taken as people and it's been promoted. Municipal corporations in Delhi want your streets to be beautified not designed. And they say, can I have an architect to do a beautification scheme of the street number so and so? So they understand architecture is as a beautification point. How does a beautifier? So just like if I want to go to a beautician shop and I say that, look, I'm getting married. So can you just beautify my face? How much money should that person charge? Five lakhs? No way. So if beautification is all I bring to a building, my money will be that of a beauticians. So I think that somewhere this understanding has to be made clear. And who makes that clearance? I make that. I can't wait for somebody and say, look, look, I'm very good. Please understand. I'm please, you know, I can't do that. So I think that's what it is. I don't think we get paid less. I know my, my, my very close friend who was, a, who was a law student many years ago. Ask a lawyer how much a lawyer gets paid in the first time. They work free for senior lawyers. They intern under lawyers for no money. We as architects at least get a stipend. I know of lawyers who don't get a thing. It takes them years to get their first little paycheck, right? Or even, you know, money for their patrol. Not all doctors who start their own clinic start getting to buy a BMW after one month. No way. So only certain professions which are right now hot and in a corporate setup, they sometimes get obscene amount of money. Obscene, I'm telling you. I don't mind using that word. And my, me to compare with that obscenity and therefore running away from the basic trade like all of you said, you know, the satisfaction, the creativity, the maza. I have not seen any um, uh, uh, completely unemployed architect standing on the street begging for food. No way. I haven't seen, not in my entire life. Sorry. So I think it's a myth. This myth needs to be busted and needs to be busted well. So I think it's, it's completely 
Uh, I mean, it's a big lie going around that we are not paid. Okay, some people, I mean, TK, there is, there is some architect who is unable to pay their uh, trainees because he himself is not getting money. Okay, I don't need to work for him. I can work for him if I have that huge respect for that guy. I'm ready to work for, for him free of cost. But that's between, it's a deal between him and me. It's for me to take that deal or not to take that deal. I can't play the victim all the time. And in that process, downgrade the profession, the occupation, and the subject. I think this is ridiculous. So, okay, having said that, now you wanted to talk about how, how teachers can make their, it's a very how, simple thing. How I, teachers can teach and how learners can learn. So I think that there are two or three things which I have always followed in my life, both as a student, as a, I mean, for, for the student's position and as a teacher from the teacher's position. I've always told my, uh, uh, you know, students that, uh, yes, I am your teacher. I'm a tutor, all right. But I'm your tutor because I was born earlier than you. And uh, therefore, I did my graduation before you did. And therefore, I had that great opportunity to be in the, in the field before you were born. Right. Now you're getting into it. So one day you will become like me. So I am right now not your master G. I'm not saying I'm a facilitator or a guide. Those words have gone haywire. I'm a senior. It's a very simple thing. I'm your senior. And I've told that I'm on probably on record. I've told my students that before I die, I want to leave behind a replacement of mine, at least as good as I am if not better, because that's the only way civilization moves. So it's my job to see that my next generation is a good generation, right? So what happens is that in most, in many places, and I don't think it is limited to architecture, it comes out strongly in architecture because it's a very interactive education. You, do, you don't get evaluated on a question paper, answer, copy kind of a thing sitting in a remote room and somebody whom, who do, whom you don't even know is going to, you know, tick mark your answers, bad or good or ugly or whatever. Here, you're face to face. Somebody gives the crit. Now, I don't understand why some professional or educators, they start showing off their knowledge in front of an 18, 19, 20 year old student grilling that person saying that Ye tumne kya kiya hai and do that so then that's not a good teacher anyways do i do that to my younger brother or sister do i do that to my son or daughter do i do it to my any relative who is as i said my next generation so if my if i understand that if i use i mean like habib ji said fraternity family this is a newcomer to my family just born first year my student hai just born, new person, what do I do? Right? So I have to slowly and gradually help that person to become me or something like me, not exactly a copy of me. But have, so I think that's what teaching does. Second, as far as the student is concerned, I will not stand, I, I have my huge respects for my teachers. Thank God they were there. But there was one thing very clear. I've never blamed my teachers and therefore not praise them very highly either. Uh, the point was very simple. The college, the institute, through its infrastructure and human resource, the teachers, has given me an opportunity to become an architect. I am paying for those facilities. So I go and use that environment and I take those resources as best as I can. If I don't do that, I'm going to just sit there and say, Aap mere ko architect bana do. Teka leke rakha hai kya? This is not a contract. A college is an environment. Otherwise, I will not read a book on architecture. But because I am now five years in that environment, I walk into the library and I've done that. Walked into the library, go there, look at things. Today, you can browse on the laptop if you want. But if you are not in the back of your head, if you are going to do MBBS, you are not going to look necessarily of most of the time about Indian temple architecture. You will be probably looking at, okay, what happens when somebody gets cancer? So in the same way, when I'm doing my BR, my overall mind is working with that. So when I browse digitally or physically in a library, I just go and do it. I am trying to extract maximum from that environment. I will go and, you know, uh, you know, go and talk to the teacher. Can I please get five minutes extra from you? 
my job that teacher might say nahi bahut kaam hai nahi please sir he will give that time and you say okay come after 5 o'clock ye pagal hai ladka koi baat nahi 5 o'clock ke baad wo 5 minute dene ke jagah pe i can i can i can guarantee 90% of the teachers are not going to be like you know let you go even after 45 minutes that's what you do you take that and the story was given to us long long ago mahabharat mein why how did arjun come to know more from dronacharya pani lete samay baki sab log jate the river aur rivulet pe aur wahan thodi der halla gulla bhi karte the ek dusre ke upar pani chitate the fir lota mein pani leke aate the peene ka this man came to know that usko teer zameen pe dal ke pani nikala ja sakta hai so he used to just go behind a a tree or something like that jaldi se pani leke he used to come to dronachar earlier than the others so by the time dronachar would be waiting for the others to join in he has already explained a few things to arjun he learned dronachar didn't go to arjun arjun went to dronachar dronachar was available yes that was the whole idea right bhishma got dronachar here sit but it is arjun who took it from him so i think that as a student once i get to an environment both physical as well as environment you know the academic environment of an architecture department etc etc it's my job to just suck everything from as much as i can and more the merrier so that's what i would say that and that's what i have done all the time and i think that that's what uh, i don't think i was there regularly in every studio or every class maybe but i think i came out much richer in the summer holidays instead of going around and doing nothing at home and just sort of you know sleeping you know 12 hours a day i used to go and work for architects why maybe because i had i always had a lot of dues with the canteen wala and whatever right so in the sum, summers i worked so by the time i finished my br when i would go to an office they would say aapko to pehle se hi aata hai so when my other friends would or my other colleagues would get 1000 or you know 1200 rupees my days okay salary per month i was getting 1500 how can i say that i was underpaid i was getting more paid than even my own peers why because i did all those kinds of things and i didn't do it because hi hi mujhe karna hai i did it because it was fun right it was fun the first 300 rupees salary which i got after the summer in the summer holidays after second year i remember i went and bought a sari for my grandmother and those tears in her eyes my grandmother is not there any more but those tears more than 40 years ago almost 40 years ago i still remember with joy right happen very clearly yes i can no no so i think that that's the way be alive that's it so i think uh, i can imagine what your classes would be like and why your students love you so much because i can see the animated uh, uh, expressions of yours um nandini what are other ways for students to learn outside the classroom uh, he talked about maybe interning yeah, i talked about so many important things i think just learning from your seniors taking from your teachers i think this idea of of also going and working with whomever you can and it doesn't need to you know it could be an architectural practice but it could be anything of interest i think uh, you know if you if you make a profession out of the things that you're interested in it my gosh you've got it right so i think you know you've got to work out what are those things you're passionate about and the world is full of so many things so i think students you know as architects were given tools beyond that the students need to go out into the outside world and explore you know as uh, manogna was saying you know i'm tired i want to go and explore and that is part of architecture it is a tough profession it is physically mentally technically it's tough and let nobody tell you otherwise it's it's you know it's 24 hours your mind is on the clock it never goes off you're physically on site you're physically need to be available you're in a service industry you need to provide to your clients so you're really a multitasker you're constantly you know evolving around this role so of course you know there are days so unless you absolutely are passionate and you found those things that kind of keep that fire burning those are all the external aspects of the profession that are hard and tough and i think you know architects should be very proud i think we we should be proud as indians of our architects because it it is a, you know a, a really back breaking profession and 
people who are able to do it walking the straight and narrow have much to be proud of and once again i you know appeal back to parents that be proud of your kids who are following this profession support them understand the work they do uh, you know uh, be proud when you go visit it and what an amazing gift it's a tangible built form when um, i i remember i had a colleague who worked with us and uh, uh, you know their parents were not accepting of the profession that she was doing and they refused to come or interact or um, really you know accept any of it and i recall we finished quite an important project and it was open to the public to come and see and her parents did come and see it and after that her father told her he was so it. proud and that's all you know it's it is that and you know she was over the moon that's all it took was that acknowledgement of of all the hard work and valuing the work that she brought to the space so i think that's that's all children want from their parents is that acknowledgement that value that what you're doing is worth something and that you're contributing so i hope that answers some aspects yes. of it manubna how did you uh, learn and keep it, keep that fire burning i mean i know being uh, part of nasa is one thing for sure that would probably have helped uh, but besides that and about nasa also you could uh, see how 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 you uh, you know kept your passion I I think I've always been the person who'd love to keep myself busy. So uh, I kept working. I used to find different things other than my studios and other than the regular lecture classes that we would attend. I kind of uh, found a lot of different interesting things like talks, seminars, or workshops that would kind of uh, you know give me knowledge. Or I I tried exploring a lot of things outside studio. Tried attending a lot of things. and there have been lectures that i have attended which kind of changed the complete thought process that i would take into my design and i should say every student should have their own driving force or they should keep hustling to finish the course it needs a lot of determination and hard work so i think self motivation is the best way to go ahead and there are a couple of people in and around who would help me go through this like there are days when i get tired but i still find a light of hope somewhere and go ahead thanks uh, there's an interesting question i'm amused actually udelan mishra is uh, i'm presuming uh, it could be a young architect as well i, I if it was a, a prospective architect then it's an interesting question how do you handle a client nandini very carefully the, uh, the reason i'm asking this even though it may not be relevant directly i think it still gives an insight into our world so that's the reason i'm bringing this up and saying why not um i think at the end of the day we are a service industry and you know we do provide the service to the client clients are um if i had to draw them out as an architect imagine all possible shapes forms sizes uh, they come in all types apologies but they also your patrons uh, they can you know there are certain clients we have done like a person has a doctor and a lawyer they have an architect they come to you for their home for their office for their larger projects it becomes a lifelong relationship um uh, there are some clients which are very large scale you have to deal with not just one people but large organizations so very diverse group of people very hierarchical um you have to learn how to deal with you know the file pusher on the bottom end right up to the ceo or the chairman how do you present to them so there must be a respect across all levels of who your client is and then you may have clients who um for example if when we did the village school your client are the villagers are you talking to them are you listening to them or are you assuming that you know what they want so i think um it's as i talked about a puzzle the client is also a puzzle and are you good to understand how you know how do you analyze them what they want what's their dream and of course they're going to be big tussles there are always challenges no project is done without some great challenges but once it's done and you look back my gosh the amount you've learned so i think uh, your greatest learning comes from challenges and failures um so that keeps you going so clients are part of architecture and part of the puzzle we must enjoy figuring them out 
Thanks, that's, that's so well said. Uh, Tapan, I have two questions for you again from, one is from Ram Prakash. May, may I add to what Nandini said? Oh, most question? certainly, most certainly. All right. Uh, so whoever is that gentleman who said, I have never handled a client. Uh, clients are not to be handled. Very simple, right? I've always tried to understand my client. So I think that's the very, that, that's the thing we should carry. Second thing is that I should have something of value with myself. Once the, see, I mean, I, I will differentiate between not all clients are users. There are clients who are like just the financiers or managers in a corporate company, right? So there are various kinds of clients, but whatever it is, if the client has come to me, I haven't been to the client. Client has called me up saying, Mera ye project aap karenge. Yeah, we would like you to be one of the competitors or whatever it is. He has reached out. How? Why? Do you reach out to a person whom you don't like to respect? Don't understand that he's qualified? Once he has or he or she has reached out to you, means that there is already a baseline created and that person thinks at least, right or wrong, I don't know, thinks that I'm going to bring some value to the work he or she is interested in getting done. That's a great starting point. Now, if I am going to lose that bench, that step, it's my problem. It's my issue. But if I build it on that further, I don't need to handle anybody. And I think that every time I have worked, I've worked in the profession long enough. I was not always a full-time educator. I was always, in fact, for the longest period of time, I was a part-time teacher and a part-time uh, you know, practitioner. I have, even today, when I have stopped practicing for the last 12 years, I get the same clients calling me back. They are not going to do a work, even a repair work without me going and just, in fact, just giving them an advice saying, but you have to bring that value. You don't need to handle a client. Just the relationship that you know. The relationship, like Nandini also said, we they are it's part of the ecosystem. You don't handle the contractor, you don't handle the mason, you don't handle your structural engineer, you don't handle your client. You work together. It's a it's a it's a co-creation. As long as you understand that he is a part of my team, a part of my ecosystem, right? world will go and whenever there are times when there are some clients who come up with some very funny uh, you know uh, demands funny because i am part, uh, because i am a professional in the building area i can see some things becoming funny but even the doctor sometimes finds hum net pe ja ke pata laga ke pahunch jate hain doctor ke paas hamare koi isme shayad dekho dekho mera kuch aisa ho mera heart theek hai ki nahi aur doctor keh raha kuch nahi hai gas tha pet mein right so there can be errors mistakes they also go padosi se puchte hain ya kuch karte hain client just sit down it has happened with me vastu karne ke chakkar mein i remember all that i said can we have half an hour ek ek cup coffee let me explain to you What's the part of real Vastu and what is the, uh, you know, mythical Vastu? And we sat down, two engineers, owners, clients, half an hour, coffee to coffee at the end of half an hour, one of the brothers stands up and says, chahiye, jo aapko lagta hai, You don't handle them. You tell them and you should know first, obviously, if you are convinced and you know, you are able to make the other person also understand. Don't convince them also. Make them understand. Right? I think it's possible. So that's where I will end that question. Please go ahead with the next question, Gita. So this is kind of unrelated, but I think it's a, uh, if, I, if I know Kostab Das is a faculty who's asking this. I know so yeah. he's talking about the NEP, the new education policy that's come up. The flexibility that it allows, how do you integrate it and how do you make the most of it in the current education system as far as architecture goes? I don't know how to make it because I think each one of us will be able to do it in our own way. After all, we are designers, right? Right? There is no, I mean, like Nandini said, there is no one way of making it. One way of doing it. Right. So I think that we need to do that. I do not think that, you see, there are there are a couple of things. There are certain things in the NEP which I personally don't all, uh, you know fully agree to, but uh, it's a policy. I mean, I may not, I, I may not agree to like this 
hundred percent each policy of any kind of policy, right? Not not just education, but anything maybe, right? So there will be certain things which I don't fully agree to, but that's okay. It's a democratic country. Let's have the policy. What does it really say? I mean, I don't know what kind of flexibility one is talking about. I was just writing maybe while you were putting this question, I just jotted down. There is, let's say, there is an flexibility in the exit policy. I think that Council of Architecture had already long time ago, I mean, I think some more than 20 it. years ago, we have been talking about, or we already have officially a stage one and a stage two, three years of a stage one. And there was a discussion. I still remember TVB School of Habitat Studies, it's, that school doesn't exist anymore. We were discussing that how can somebody come out at stage one? Can I think there's person only one be, person so far who's availed that stage one, if I'm not wrong. I'm sure there are people who are doing that. But you know, after third year, can that person go out with a certificate? Now, there are people who are giving BA or BSc. I'm saying, why not a diploma? Right. Let that be. Let, let it not be called a BA or a BS. Let it be diploma in architecture. So today, the NEC a, actually suggesting doing it. Yeah, that's a discussion for another uh, forum. I so guess, what I'm trying to say is that in architecture, there seems to be already this thing happening. So now, if I want to implement the NEP's wishes into that part of flexibility, I am quite sure it is not going to be such a such an absolute you know difficulty. Sorry. Okay. So I think that is something which we need to understand. Then there is things like, you know, credit banking or credit choice of credits. I think we always had this huge set of electives. One may say that maybe right in the beginning, first year, it's after all a professional course, maybe in first year and second year, uh, the flexibility range might be a little less as far as choice of subjects is concerned. But I think by the time one reaches third year, fourth year, fifth year, that we actually want them to have choices without the NEP. So I think that incorporating that now that it is there, I think we will probably put our nuts together and do a good job out of it. So I think that's perfectly all right. The other kind of a thing was that, uh, you know, uh, multidisciplinary, the two things. That's where I have a little bit of an issue. I thought architecture education was inherently multidisciplinary. I think Nandini and everybody said, we, we, we study a little bit of law without building bylaws, we will not go anywhere. We study history, we land up in, you know, I still remember we, we were taught what is the chemical formula for cement. So chemistry, physics, forces, physics, you know, bending moments and all those kinds of things. We have a huge multidisciplinary inherent now, if we take a subject in civil engineering a little bit or take another little module or a you know, piece of a subject from art or any place, computers, okay, how to, how to do some better you know, graphics or digital, I don't find that there is going to be a huge, the only thing that I find is little where I'm a little uh, worried is that it should not become so scattered as of now because our degree is connected with the license the COA registration. If that were to go, then architecture can be anything, right? You can have a mixture of anything. So as long as, and it, there is a possibility, I don't know how it's going to work because medicine and law has been kept out of the NEP. You can't have medicine going, uh, you know, completely multidisciplinary. I'm sure uh, if I want to go to NDA, National Defense Academy, it cannot be completely multidisciplinary. So architecture being a licensed profession, there will be a certain restriction, but because of the inherent quality and the nature of the subject, I think that those flexibilities are fine. In our days, I mean, I dropped one year to work in a slum with Revati and Vasant Kamar before I came back and did my thesis, only the thesis. Final year ke sare subjects kar ke clear kar liye the, 1983 with my batch. And then I went off for a year or at least seven, eight months. I came back in 1984 just to do my thesis, not the other subjects. It was possible in School of Planning and Architecture 35 years ago. Right. So what I'm saying is that coming and going, taking a drop year, moving ahead, come back, coming back and rejoining, I don't think a problem. And especially because ours is an experiential way of teaching and learning. It's not dependent on a book, you will book out of 
वो चला गया टेक्स्ट बुक चेंज हो गया जी नए सिलेबस में हमारे यहाँ टेक्स्ट बुक ही नहीं है ड्राइंग तो सीखनी पड़ेगी ना डिजाइन भी सीखना पड़ेगा सो द काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दैट वी डू इन आर्किटेक्चर इट विल नॉट चेंज ड्रास्टिकली इफ माई करिकुलम डॉक्यूमेंट चेंजेस बिकॉज एवरी फाइव ईयर्स मे बी यू वुड लाइक टू रिवाइज अ फ्यू थिंग्स एंड देर फॉर समबडी यूज टेक एन अ फोर ईयर गैप माई नाउ कम बैक एंड से हाई आई डोंट रिकोगनाइज दिस करिकुलम विल नॉट हैपन इन आर्किटेक्चर so i don't think that the nep should be taken as a hawa it will have some restrictions we have to negotiate as one calls we don't have to compromise anything we need need to do a little bit of a negotiation and i think we will be able to uh, take into account a lot of things in fact i think it is getting more formalized i'm quite you know sort of uh, you know okay with this uh, new nep thing no don't lose no. kastav i hope that answers your question ram prakash has a question which i'll post to nandini before we get to the last uh, segment uh, he asks is this a growing field is architecture a growing field in india or is it, is it already a significant one uh, i think both uh, it's significant and it's growing i think it's always been significant it's been part of you know any country and innate part of any country it really defines who we are it represents who we are it's so diverse especially in a country like ours the architecture that we have growth of course i think extensive um whether it's in collaborations uh whether it's in quality whether it's in i think with technology we're seeing a lot of growth within the within uh, the field so there's huge growth there's and i'd like to say there's plenty of work for everyone i think that's what's so important in a country like ours which is so vast and so diverse there's enough work for everybody to do good work in the profession so huge growth uh, we have to be able to i think responsibly manage the growth i think you know there is um, there are so many things happening across the country so i think as a profession also you know how are we able to um responsibly build as we move forward and think of our cities or our projects as contributing positively towards the profession and the environment and the community so i think if each of us does that our growth is you know would be amazing so i also hope that we as practitioners academicians can all come together and you know look at how the growth is happening within our country together i think we're also invested and passionate about the work we do so uh, certainly you know i hope that as we grow and as we see this growth across our country all of us can come together cohesively and you know uh, do something important and great for the country so let's hope that we are able to i would say um you know uh, uh contribute and participate in the growth as architects i feel this is very important you you repeatedly been talking about the fraternity needing to come together for us to uh, make the necessary changes on various fronts that are required today and i think that's that's a message that's coming through again and again uh, and i hope those who are listening in the young ones and uh, maybe the seniors also we actually get down to doing something together um, manogna this is for you because again this session is meant for those who are uh looking to make this decision of getting into architecture and i think you are the one who's made it most recently so there are so many choices to make the journey involves making the choice of firstly making that decision yes i want to study architecture then the entrance examinations how do you decide which college to pick the counseling process um what are the tips you would like to give those on this leg of the journey currently Okay. Uh, the tips would be very simple. Attempt both NADA and JE paper two. If possible, give another design-oriented entrance exam, NID or NIF, etc. And I would just want to tell architecture could just be the best decision you'll make in life if you love what you're doing and if you enjoy designing process. And uh, try to make yourself aware of what the discipline entails, its prospects, and what it means for people to be a designer. see the more you make yourself aware about what happens around you in terms of built environment the better before you get into the professional curriculum of architecture make the decision about choice of college wisely don't go by names talk to people studying there interact with people look for experienced faculty members and the way the school functions in each college that you are planning to or considering to apply for you could always and ask you could always ask around 
as architect Tapan was telling previously, the resources were very limited back then, but now there's internet, there's a lot of network that's already there. So I would say make the best out of it, talk to people, get to know what happens in different schools and their uh, philosophies of education. Also adding on, uh, keep a check of all the deadlines in the application process, keep yourself updated with different types of uh, counselings and different institutes follow different types of uh, accepting processes and all of that. So keep a check of all of that. Uh, the choices are plenty, just make the right decision and be informed, make informed decisions. So you just need to have the passion to go ahead and you'll enjoy the journey for yourself. That's sane and sound advice. Uh, I think once the decision is made, again, not looking back and feeling, oh, I should have done something else is also something that I'd probably uh, tell those who are making that decision. Tapan, anything that you'd like to add to that on making choices uh, and navigating this? Uh, well, I think that uh, the, the point that I have said that as long as your heart is there, uh, then obviously you will automatically start looking for it. And uh, yes, like everybody's saying that, you know, you need to do a little bit of a background study and uh, make a point. And then the only thing that I would add is that we're not stuck with one thing. I mean, what's what I love about architecture education is that it takes into so many things that five years later, you don't all, you, you don't really have a tunnel way of going into that career. You diversify, you can do many other things. Your masters can also sort of, you know, your MRHs and many other M's. Or Oyster, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can diversify so much. So while you are doing that, I have, I, I, I have known people who did their architecture, but their heart was in structures. And uh, then they did, uh, you know, BEM in SPA that, uh, you know, you, you know, sort of masters in building uh, engineering and management. management yeah. And that gentleman has des uh, designed the structures of one of my, uh, you, know, uh, you know, projects in the hills. And it was such a pleasure talking to that person because he was fundamentally an architect. So you can do while you realize five years is a long time. So that's you find your to, calling, you you so kind you of find your, and there is the possibility of doing it. So what's what's good about this subject is that I think so. I think it's a place to go in, and I think every everybody should do some graduation or some part of architecture. I think uh, doesn't matter if you want to become a doctor or a you know air force pilot. I I have um, known somebody who's become a chef after uh, uh, studying architecture, and she said it was the soundest. Uh, grounding or foundation that she had because it's to do with creativity and understanding even a chef needs to be so creative you know so true true yes true. Um, Nandini uh, what about those who missed the bus this year you never missed the bus as far as I'm concerned I missed it by many years <laughs> so, right. that's um, why I put it to you <laughs> you know I, I I remember when I was reconsidering I went to every single lawyer in my law firm and said, you know, it's so late and I'm thinking of doing this and what should I do? And it was amazing. The majority said, you know, I wanted to become a chef. And the other said, I want to become a horse trainer. I said, what are you lot doing here? I feel passionate about everything else. But they were so supportive. And, um, you know, I, you know, always to remember Jeffrey Bava started practicing law at, I mean, I was a lawyer and an architect. Yeah. 30 odd so you know if the great masters of course you know uh, set the examples it's never too late and it's never too late to do anything you love you know I think that's part of the journey of life and as uh, Tapan very wisely said you know you're destined for certain things there's a path and you know follow that destiny wherever it takes you but certainly I don't ever believe that something is too late there's always an opportunity. Thank you. That's lovely. Anything else anybody would like to add before we close the session? I hope we made sense to all who <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure working. we've helped kindle uh, that fire that we were talking about and those that are were sitting on the fence, probably we've helped them make up their minds for sure. Uh, you know, all those who have taken the entrance exam to study are likely to do so, maybe anxious about the field that they're getting into. Parents may be experiencing all kinds of emotions while letting uh, their wards fly. And I think that the session has helped assuage those concerns and given a glimpse into our beautiful world. 
Uh, I'd like to end with, the, with these words, which are quoted from Ernest Dimnit. Architecture of, the, of all the arts is the one that acts the most slowly, but the most surely on the soul. And uh, yes, uh, I hope many of you who are listening in and tuning in today uh, end up choosing this magical field and find your uh, passion. Thank you. Thanks, Nandini, Manogna, and Tapan. And thank you, thank you COE, again. Yeah. Thank, you, Mom. thank you all. All the best.